We'll have the next speaker, Dr. Anaga Harur, who is the Academic and Research Committee Chairman for West right now. And she will be talking on when do I convert from a surgeon, a clinician to a management profile. So uh, she has a very famous Anil Eye Hospital in uh, West Borivili. And she is already uh, uh, owner of three, four, five hospitals now. And she's in the process of opening more. Uh, she just doesn't talk much, but she's a very hard worker and uh, a, a very nice clinician. Dr. Anaga Harur. Thank you so much, Dr. Satyajit, for the such a kind words. And a very good afternoon to all of you. I know all of you must be hungry and we are coming towards the fag end of our session. But please be alert and I think I want more participation from you all in my talk, more than just me talking. Uh, welcome to our LDP program and I'm sure since morning you have been bombarded with so many things and I don't know how many notes you must have taken. Definitely all this is going to be there in our uh, editor proceedings thing. But yes, just a few pointers from me because what I have gone through in my career, I thought I would just share with you because all of us finally, this question is always going to be the quint quintessential question in our mind that what all can I do? Ek admi kya kya kar sakta hai? Should I do OT? Should I do OPD? Should I do marketing? Should I do management? Should I look after my family? For all us females, I think uh, wherever we are at whatever point in life we are, family takes precedence over work and that fight is always going to be there as to where we should give more importance. But at wherever you are, whether you have a small practice, a huge uh, practice or a chain of clinics, Management is something which is very, very important and we cannot undermine the importance of that. We need to know the need, why we need to do this. What is our aim in doing it? When do we start doing it? And of course, how? It's not enough just to start practice. You must have now finished your uh, fellowship and you have now uh, be, uh, decided in your mind that yes, now is the time. Maybe I've had enough experience everywhere finish my fellowship, done more uh, consultancy uh, wherever you are and now I want to fall into the uh, pool of starting private practice. But remember it's not enough just to start. You need to evaluate whatever you are doing, monitor whatever you are doing because consistency is what is important. It's not just to begin. And then the last and most important is you also need to grow. Whenever you start any kind of practice in whatever kind of practice you are what you want to achieve in life is very important we are all ophthalmologists and I'm sure all these aims are going to be common to all of us we all want good patient care improved patient outcomes because one good patient one happy patient is going to get you 10 more patients I still believe today apart from all the digital marketing and all that one happy patient is going to uh, go back and talk to his neighbors, his friends, his family, extended family, and they are all going to come back to you. Better workflow in your systems, improve job satisfaction for all your employees. No one man can do anything. It's your team who is going to be there. And I think you as an uh, ophthalmologist or at the apex is going to spend just a few minutes with your patient, but your staff is going to spend more time. So how they are going to talk to your patients and what is the experience of the patient with them is more important. And better growth for all, not only for you, but also for your entire organization. So when do I start? The answer simple to this is right now, if you have not already done it yesterday. Why right now? It's not that, okay, let me just start now as a clinician. Let me get 30 patients a day and then I'll start doing management. No. Even if you don't have a single patient, even if you have not even thought about, you know, how you're going to do everything, it's right now that you have to start management is probably more important than just doing clinical work. So how do you go about it? First and foremost is you need to have a vision. Yes, aim we all know that we all want good quality eye care to be given to our patients. What is your goal? So first of all, you go back and write down where do you look at yourself? Where do you see yourself one year down the line and five years down the line? That much at least you need to know. And then it's not enough to know that you need to go there, but the roadmap is also important. So you have to have that roadmap so that the next 
what you do is acting on that roadmap. Now let's see how do you do it. In order to achieve something, you have various ways. And to go on to that roadmap, these are the various things that you need to look at. First of all, build, think of strategies. We'll look at each of them in detail. A good HR infrastructure, yes. If you have deep pockets, then you can go ahead and take the best place that you have. If not, rentals is something that you would obviously look at in the beginning. And then as your practice grows, you can buy out places and then finance, equipment and marketing. Let's see each of them. Just touch upon them. Now, regarding strategies. Now, whenever you are into any kind of practice, whether it's a single practice, group practice, chain of practices, or you're working in an institute or for somebody, interpersonal skills is something that is going to take you a long way. How you behave with your patients, with your colleagues, and with your staff. Remember, I have around 15 doctors working under me. And I have staff coming back to me and saying, yeah, doc this doctor behaves rudely, this doctor behaves nicely. You know, everybody is watching you. We should not think that I am sitting with my patient, my pa I, I have done my duty and that's enough. Everybody is watching you, right from the smallest person in your organization, they give feedbacks to others. And that is what is going to go a long way, how you communicate with them. Most importantly, stop thinking like an employee and start thinking like an entrepreneur. You believe that it is yours, you believe that oh, whatever you are going to do is going to change how your organization is going to be tomorrow or one year later. And that is going to be very, very important. If you keep thinking like an employee, I got my salary, I go back home, I have enough money. It's not just the money, it's what you're going to put in, the hard work, the passion and the blood and sweat that you're going to put in, in your work, even if you are just an employee. Accreditation, yes, it, is, it works both ways. It increases the confidence that the patients have in you and even in your staff, they know that they are working for an organization that monitors everything. They cannot get away by doing sub uh, or average or below average work and they are responsible, accountable for everything. And we have so many regulations. So one important part of management is today you have a lot of regulatory compliances to be followed and you need to look at all this. Friends, HR is something which is the basic backbone and the foundation of any organization. Right from hiring, when you are hiring people, a lot of people will come to you or you have called them for an interview. You need to look at the attitude of a person. Somebody may be very, very good, will have a great CV, has great presentations, publications everywhere. But if the attitude is not right and if the attitude is not in line with your vision, then that person may not be the best person. If the attitude is good, you what you need to do, you can train a person, but you can't change his attitude. So you have to differentiate between the two. That is why induction becomes very important. Whenever somebody joins your organization, he has to be completely aware about who you are, what your legacy is, what your goals are, what, what is important to you and what his responsibility and role is going to be in your organization. If he doesn't know it, and after a month, you tell him, I'm not happy with your work. You're not what I thought you were. But he didn't know what you wanted out of him. So I think that clarity has to be there. Always upskill, not only yourself, not only your colleagues, but also each and every employee in your organization. You, somebody who is being in a receptionist job for the last five years and is sitting there doing the same thing again and again, month on month, year on year, just go back and ask, is there something that she may want to do more? She can contribute better. It's not that she may be doing it very well, but you have to upskill and upgrade yourselves and continuous appraisals of not only yourself, not only your colleagues, but also all the staff regularly. Remember, it's a teamwork. Today, you may have just a staff of three, four, but tomorrow, that three may become 30. But you start delegating work, start distributing work, because if you keep everything centralized, do everything yourself, it's not going to work beyond a particular limit. And that is why having an organogram is very important. You need to have a hierarchy, who is going to report to whom, give responsibilities to people, and you'll be amazed to see how they will actually do it much better than what you would have done alone, trying to divide your time among so many things. So if you want to have good management skills, these are the various things 
that you need to be very good at and if you are not you need to take effort to become better in all these things decision making yes today whatever you decide has so many factors your staff may not understand why you have taken a particular decision okay delegation of work problem solving feedbacks not only from your patients but also from your staff today whenever we have a new rule or a new policy in the organization i don't take it on my own singularly unilaterally i call all my staff whoever is relevant the core team as i call it whoever have been with you and they know that what your goals and values are take their feedback as to what do you think whether this will work or not be approachable sometimes if you are too haughty too uh, ill tempered or not very approachable even the lowest rung in your organization should feel free to come and ask you what their problems are so that you can actually be more of a friend like them in fact just uh, to tell you in my organization we are an all women organization a staff of almost 100 and they call me didi not madam or doctor and this has been there since the time i started it is almost 25 years that i'm completing now you need to be ready to change you may have made a policy but if your staff is not happy if the, it's not getting the results there is no ego in it at all be ready to accept that yes this probably didn't work there may be something else that will work better be ready to change and the emotional quotient i think for us all of us as doctors is very important revenues are important patient feedback is important but how you you need to be with them like a family not only for the colleagues and uh, the staff but also to your patients so types of managerial skills yes we need to hone our technical skills human skills conceptual skills and yes diagnostic and analytical skills too finance is something how many of you here are looking at your finances and have fin financial literacy if i can call it can you raise your hands come on i can't think of this no the first thing that you go back and learn is financial literacy some time back even i was like that but please remember you need to know you have to go even if it uh, appears like greek and latin read your financial statements sit with your ca ask him to explain a lot of youtube videos in fact will explain to you what is profit and loss statement what is cash flow statement what is a balance sheet what is ebita what is rosi all that you need to know if you are a doctor it is not just enough to know yes my patient got 66 and 6 i am happy i am on top of the world but that may not be enough if you want to look at yourself as an entrepreneur and if you are looking at yourself as management so first and foremost is literacy budgeting so if you have now starting a new practice where is your budget you need to have a project report even if, before you have finalized the place that you have okay not only for that uh, inauguration of that place but one year later two years later so the two years budgeting has to be done even before you start that's extremely important so it's not important just to have a profit and loss yes i had so many so much xx amount of profit this month i'm so happy no look at the cash flow your cash flow may be in the negative in spite of having a good profit so cash flow is something which is more critical for your day to day working so you need to look at all that look at your bank balances because i think most of us would be taking some kind of loans look at speak to the bank managers directly go and speak to them because you don't think that they are unapproachable all this you need to do inventory yes no, no, uh, speak to the vendors yourself negotiate for the best price because until and unless you do that you cannot cost cut cut your costs see it's not enough just to earn more but anything saved is a single rupee saved is a single rupee earned so you have to look at your inventory you don't have too much of stock initially only otherwise that can really suck your finances review your finances every month proper review okay sit down with your ca ask him have a great discussion with him swot analysis we had a great discussion already so you look at your strengths look at your weaknesses your opportunities and your threats so all this you have to do there is no shortcut you have to take out time now you'll ask me how you will have time for all this we'll come to that later equipment now whenever you having starting or upgrading your practice plan on what are you going to do what is the kind of practice that you want to have it's just an opd or opd plus ot so plan on the equip equipment 
acquire them in the best possible manner not only acquiring maintenance is important today you've started a practice two years down the line your oct is not working your auto ref is not working so what is important is have an amc schedule have a schedule for everything every month all the calibrations need to be done give somebody the um, responsibility to come back with it and you have to just sign on it you cannot do everything on your own so your head optom can be responsible for doing the calibration ask whether the uh, swabs have been sent or not whether the fumigation has been done or not so many things you have to have troubleshooters also and always upgrade your equipment how as your practice develops now audit what all audits would you do one is patient satisfaction we saw how google reviews are important positive google reviews give you great confidence patients come to you today we have we started with 150 today we have 8000 google reviews that doesn't come in a day you have to train your pay, uh, staff to do it you have to be you you have to actually tell them what to talk to the patient don't leave it on them because they will not probably understand all this initially Surgical uh, audit, look at whether you have had any complications because one unhappy patient is going to also cancel out 10 more patients to you. Look at your footfalls, the revenue and also audit your employees. How, whether they are happy or not, have, you know, the, there are something called as water cooler conversations. It's not always, ye kaam kiya kya, ye hua ki nahi, ye kidhar hai, no. Ask them about your family, ask them how your, his child has been doing. That brings you closer and they will go ahead and do whatever, you know, one of my staff actually fell down, had a fracture and she was off work for three months. The first thing is we gave the a complete salary and sent her a check at home so that, you know, and basket of fruit so that, see, what they want is also to be treated well. It's not just the money that they are in for you. Yeah, almost done. So a lot of KPIs. So how would you monitor all this? How would you, uh, I think that a lot of talk has been done on measurables and monitoring. Data is king. If you have not, how many of you have an EMR system in your clinic? Great. If you don't have, then that's the first thing you need to have because that will be uh, good for you because you can access it anywhere. You can, you have access to statistics. You can analyze it, monitor, coordination between your staff is extremely important, will help you to strategize what to do with your uh, staff and what other new plans you have and increases efficiency. Marketing, we already saw how all this is important. So time management becomes extremely important. You need to be efficient as well as you need to have, I know work-life balance is a uh, important term today, especially as females, we have need to give time to all our uh, other priorities also. But time management is important so formulate an action plan set your milestones frame it in the workflow break down break it down into small to-do lists have daily to-do lists you cannot do everything in one single day and then evaluate your progress that will help to improve so this is something that i have on my desk every day what is the uh, entire chart for the entire week entire month next two months and then this also i think somebody has already alluded to so evaluate and prioritize your work so that you can do it better. So remember friends, your future depends on what you do today. Go back and do it. So put it in your to-do list. Management is doing things right. Also become a leader because leadership is doing the right things. Become a leader for yourself, for your staff and for your organization. Thank you so much for your kindness.